uh, and then we will start the lesson. Thanks everybody for the for the patient and okay, it is recording. Say hi to the camera. Um, uh, let's see. Let's start sharing my screen. Cool, nice. Uh, here's his notion. Uh, today, Wednesday, thirty. We're gonna spend the morning learning, uh, diving deep a little bit more into deep into callbacks. I'm gonna do a, a little code along together, and you know, understand how how callbacks uh, use uh, uh, it is important in JavaScript. Um, we are we we have been using callbacks already maybe even like a, without knowing that we are using every time we write a for each function or we set up a event listener we are already working with callbacks so just like a make this more understandable so you know like a what piece of the code you're writing okay um all right so Let's go ahead, let's set up our file structure for today. Okay, let's, uh, where's my terminal? Let me bring my terminal over, over here. Uh, where am I? I'm gonna go to SCI. Uh, let me also make this slightly bigger. Okay. Uh, Right now, I am in my home directory. Uh, I want to go to CD, uh, SCI, DC. And here, let's go. I'm going to go to lectures this time. Oh, it should be, a, yeah, let's go to lectures. And let's create that. JS callback, callbacks uh, directory. So make directory, make directory, JS callbacks, right? Then we're gonna go inside, not that, JS callbacks. Uh, and here we will create our, our, our file structure as we have been using. Make sure you put, uh, right now here I'm creating like the JS and the CSS first, and then I'm creating the files inside of those folders. So let's do that. I'm gonna do make directory, JS, CSS, and then I can just do touch, touch index.html, and then I can do js.app js and css slash style dot css cool and if i look at the file structure here i will see this file structure right um oops and let's open that on vs code Cool. I'll, I'll put the I will put the terminal on the side here because we're not gonna use that too much. Here it is. Uh, terminal. I'm gonna say later. Oops. I need to trust the author for this folder. I think this is a new thing for the VS Code. I start getting that pop up every time I open in a different folder, different directory. Okay, let's put put it here a boilerplate. So I'm gonna do this and let's link our CSS. We're gonna use CSS today. Um, so here, CSS style, boom. And I will also will do here the script, the script tag, uh, and I'm gonna do a SRC. JS app .js. Uh, let me let me think 
Am I going to? I'm going to put the default. Since I'm putting the the head, we're going to use some DOM manipulation. So th what that means that I I will be I will be grabbing uh, HTML elements from the DOM, which is the leaves on the body, and if I put the script, uh, if, if I leave the script just like that, what's going to happen is my JavaScript file will run before the HTML finish to parse on the DOM. So we can always use that, that attribute called defer. And this will just like uh, hold my, my script tag here to, to, to run. And it will wait until the whole HTML page are, is sparse on the browser, and then you know, I will run it, right? I will do that. Uh, cool. So pretty much my setup. Um, so let's go ahead here on app.js. Just to, to see if everything is, is good to go, I'm going to do a console.log uh, message here, callbacks. Lesson. And also, let me just for the sake, I'm gonna add a body, body, not body, body. And I'm gonna just like to change the background color for now. Back, background color. I'm gonna do this aqua. And and that's it for now. Okay, just to see if everything is working. So I'm gonna go back to my index.html and I can all click on this little button here that say go live or can click on maybe depending on the version you know, of our VS code. I have one here open with live server. You can do both. And this will this will pop up here. There we go. My it looks like my CSS file it is it is working nicely, right? Um, and if I open the my console, my developer tools here, I can see that console log um, callback lesson, and I'm ready to go. Okay. And let's see here. I'm going to post here a message on Slack just to see if everybody is with me. Uh, so give me a thumbs up if you have your file a structure set up. Just give me a thumbs up on Slack. Okay, I see 19 thumbs ups. Um, yeah, if you I'm have any no problem. Yeah, let's, uh, what's the problem? Uh, when I click uh, go live, nothing happens. Like a window doesn't come up. Is it like it is not showing anything on, on the browser? Uh, no, nothing like a new browser uh, tab or window doesn't even come up. Let's take a look. Let's take a quick look. Make sure everybody's in the right place. What about right clicking on it? Do you get the option there? Yeah, go ahead and share your screen. Go ahead and share you share your screen, Neil. Then we can take a look very quickly and knock that out. Uh, click go to your index.html file. And you should go live here. Click on go live. Okay. 
Did you get a, a did your browser open somewhere? No, because it opens in Chrome. But it did open or no? No, I just pulled it up. Uh, nothing open. Okay. Uh, that's that's interesting. I think your live server is go ahead and type um no that will be that will be weird. Um go ahead. Go ahead on the Chrome and type. I'm gonna send you a, a Slack message. Maybe. What, what about right clicking in this text here or right clicking on index HTML to go into live servers? Go ahead and, and copy and paste this link that I send you on, on Slack and see if, if it opens for you. Okay. Yeah, um, so uh, I'm not sure why it didn't like a load automatically on your window. I think maybe it, it will be a, a, a Windows uh, setup, I assume. But yeah, it's just not like a loading for you, but it's there. You can open your console log now and you should you possibly be have a second instance of Explorer running that's not in this bar. Could be. So I've had that happen a few times. Yeah, let's always, let's see your app.js. Yeah, there's nothing there. Yeah, it is a side effect on 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 your live server setup. Uh, I really don't know what's uh, what 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 is that causing to not like a work the way uh, the other ones are working. Uh, now, just like a, so we know, add a console log in your app.js and see if, when you save the file, it will refresh your browser. Uh, console.log, I think it needs to be with a, is that a, a, a capital L or is a lower L? Uh, it's a lower case, it's just the uh, theme I have. It is a lowercase now. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, that's something. Uh have you have you seen this before, uh Ben? Or Julian? Well, in this case, in this case for you, I I really don't want to like spend too much time like debugging like a uh, live server. Um, okay. So what you can do yeah, is it's this this is a bug that we come across every now and again. I'll get the docs for it and send them over your way. Just go ahead and do what you're doing right now. And you're just gonna have to refresh the page after every time. Okay. So it's a, it's a Windows thing, unfortunately. So we'll, we'll get it taken care of for you. Just go ahead and uh, and just refresh your page for now for this lesson. Right. Yeah. Yeah, see if you, when you refresh a page, if you, if you can see your console log in the browser, um, the console. Uh, no, I'm still getting an error. Do um, go into your index.h or go into your console in VS Code and type open index.html and then it will not be a live server version of the file. But I think uh, he's on Windows. I'm, I'm not sure if he has that, that option. Did he, is the HTML file set up correctly? Because that error said HTML line seven was causing an error. Yeah, make sure you you are you have your any any typos on in, in your HTML too. That's a good thing to realize. All right, I will start sharing again. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, and Peo, if you still having the some problem, I can post here. This is my HTML file. Um, I see what it is now. Add add something. Uh, add a place. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, am I sharing my screen? Yeah. So 
let's talk about callbacks. Let's do a, a first, like I just talked about it in, initially, and then we will do some code. All right, we're gonna learn what callback function is, and kind of a bit of a review, why we need to use callbacks, like why JavaScript use callbacks. Um, and then we're gonna practice uh, using callbacks with some asynchronous functions. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, more in depth what, what that means, uh, synchronous code and asynchronous code execution. Um, and we're gonna also like explain why do uh, asynchronous function exist? Something, uh, sorry, uh, what, is the, what is the difference between one and another and why, there, why it, is, it is important for, for us to, to know how to work with the asynchronous operations. All right. Um, and we will do, uh, a, this is pretty much a, a, a lot of review. I think this, this, this lesson would be a, a bit of like a, a uh, connecting the dots. Um, we will talk about things that we are already have been using, but we just like to, we'll like to spend some time giving uh, given some like a, a attention to like a very specific points. Uh, and at the end of the day, like we will be building together a, a traffic light that can automatically, automatically change the colors to green, to yellow, to red, use uh, as an asynchronous operation. All right. All right. Okay, so Can call back. Rework? The what? Sorry, wasn't that part of the pre-work to do the traffic light thing? If that was part of the pre-work to do what? Sorry? Wasn't that part of the pre-work to do the traffic light uh, thing? No, it could um, be. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it could be. <laughs> uh, maybe it's a different type traffic light. I think there's uh, different pre-works for different people. No, it is a different different type of traffic light because we didn't write it to where it automatically changed lights yeah we just fixed the colors yeah yeah it yeah i i believe it's, it's something different uh and i don't think you guys learn about callbacks on the pre-work right no i don't okay. think so <laughs> yeah the pre-work yeah. not made by numbers yeah okay uh so uh, my lesson, like uh, I think it was last week when I talked about functions, I think I, I also explained a little bit about callbacks. And remember like uh, this is the definition that I put as a callback. And this is like, a, it, 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 it should be something that you really like uh, want, to, want to get in your head. Like uh, what is a callback? You will be hearing this terminology like uh, up and down, a lot in JavaScript. And then when we got to unit two, this is gonna be elevated to 100. Because everything like a, we will set up our, our backend. So our back our backend is pretty much built on top of the callbacks pattern. Like a, to get data from the database, we're gonna use callbacks. To, to handle our request and response, callbacks. So everything is built on the built built on top of that. So Quick definition, what is a callback? Callback is a function. Uh, callback function is a function being passed to another function as an argument. Okay, cool. Um, just like we have been doing with the for each, right? If you go to the documentation on the for each, I can show you all this. Let's just do this real quick in the end for each. And you go to the syntax here. There's a couple of ways to, to write that. Uh, and there we go. A for each, it takes, oh, that I think this is even better, like more explained. So this, uh, this are, these are the parameters that you need to pass for the for each. And the first one is a callback function, a function to execute on each element it accepts between one and three arguments. Like it did a little bit more in that. So in any other array methods, 
uh, high order hiring methods, you see that it always take the first thing it is a callback, just like find. Let's see this find. Go to the syntax again, the parameters, a callback, right? So we already have been using callbacks a, a ton. So let's go back here. And we also use callbacks when we are doing DOM manipulation, right? When we get like a, any element, a, any HTML element on, on, on the DOM and we wanna add a event listener to it, this is the handler, right? And this, I'm just passing the, the, the function that I wanted to execute, right? And you see that I'm not doing this, I'm not calling the function, I am referencing. I'm passing the function as a reference to be called once someone click on this element, all right? Uh, this is uh, another example, uh, how you can do more visually here. Uh, I think you all did something similar to this when you guys build the guess the number. You you have like a, the start, the start, start the game, the start the, the app. You will have like an in, in, a, a init function or the, the render or start the game. And then you can just reference to it, to your, to your ad event listener handler here. Okay, so pay attention on this. If you do this, this will produce in another side effect. What this is gonna do is when when JavaScript try to execute this line of code, it will actually run the function instead of just like a passing as a reference, and it's not gonna do what what you what will be ask uh, will be expecting to to do. All right. And let's this is like how we have like a, a little warning here. So a little review question is still on the for each. Right, we have our array of, of of friends here, and then I have this function, right, which is just send email. It takes a a a argument here, a parameter that is saying, and then we just like for now just console log and sending email to the name, all right, and then here we are using the for each the for each array method, all right? Well, and then as an argument, we are passing the send email function, just like that, all right? Or we could uh, write, instead of having the function declare here in this, this way, we could also use the power of, of the ES6 arrow function and, and write, pass the callback as a anonymous function, right? This, this represents a anonymous function because it doesn't have a name and you can actually just put the code inside of that, right? So this, this here is the same thing as this. It's just different ways to write your code, right? This is, uh, uh, this is more like a, a up-to-date version because it came uh, on the ES6 around 2015. This has been going on for, 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 for a while. Um, and if you and this is like a another uh, quick thing that you can talk about is the the we, you're gonna heard this name like a uh, one-liner. Uh, there's a web page uh, that I bookmarks. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I, if I if I can find. It's just like a, a a repository of doing a lot of operations in JavaScript, just like a writing one line, and and using arrow function, it kind of help us to 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 produce the same result with just one line of code. So again, this one line of code is the same of this line of code, these three lines of code. And it, acts, it is the same as this ones here. 
just different ways to write it. Okay. Okay, but looking into this code above here, um, let's take a, let's take for example this block of code. Let's keep things simple, right? Looking at this that I'm that I'm highlighting, what is my callback here? It's the uh, it's the send email in the for each. This this guy here. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And uh, as you can see, it's just a normal function, right? I declare before, send email, and I'm just passing that as, as an argument, right? Um, okay, looking at this code, how many times will the, will the for each be involved? Uh, it will involve the callback. How many times? You can come out of mute. Six times. Six times. Exactly. One for each element, right? One for each. If I have six elements on the array, it will be six times. And this is what the, what the doc says. You just say here, the callback function to execute to each element, right? Cool. Matter the the provide function once for each array element right and this is like a this is where you're going to see a uh, a lot um, a, a lot like a using callbacks in javascript in every time you have these high order array methods and what is a mouthful right like a high order array methods and this is like a, just the 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 right terminology that we use to to, to indicate that a function that is receiving another function as an argument or it is returning another function, the technical terminology that we'll call is high order function. High order function, all right? So just by, just by looking at this, what is my high order function here on this example? That's a, that's a kind of for each, right? Yep, that's correct. This is my higher, higher order function. Well, it's a method because it, it, it lives inside of the array object. But I think you guys got the idea. Array uh, methods, functions, they're pretty much the same. Uh, so we're gonna call it high order array methods. It's just because I am receiving a callback as an argument, all right? Um, cool. Let's see here. All right, so we talk about callback and the high order array methods. Why? Why they're needed, right? Just as I just demonstrated, the for each and also for the event listener. The event listener, as the example here uh, is showing you all. Uh, it's just like that you want to put a block of code, a uh, some action that you want to perform every time somebody clicks on this element, right? And then you can just pass a callback, callback to that, right? Cool. And again, I kind of like to demonstrate that, like showing the docs, because I really want you all to get used to read the docs. The docs will tell tell you all that so you can go to MDN and do add event listener there we go and let's see the callback let's see here how how actually we are getting that so the first one is the type Right, there's a, a, a full list of types that you can use here. Uh, the most common one is the click, double click, hover. And then the listener, the object receives a notification uh, when the event of the specified type occurs, that must be an object implementation, the event listener interface, or a JavaScript function. 
See the event listener's callback for details uh, of the callback itself. At the end of the day, it's just a function. So if it is a function passing to another function as an argument, it's a callback. All right. And they will call that listeners. So the majority of the time when we're talking about callback functions, we're talking about a function within a method. A function passed as an argument to another method. Okay. Right. You what? can have you can declare other functions inside inside of a, a method, right? You're just declaring on the scope of the previous uh, function. Yeah. It doesn't consider a callback. Callback is if you're passing as an argument. Okay. All right. Cool. So let me scroll down uh, quite a bit um, here. Uh, oh, I think I hit, I think my cat step, step on my, when I was adding this, this, this file. As we've seen, calling array method like for each, for each method is a great way to reiterate over all the elements in the array. Uh, then this afternoon we'll go, uh, it will expand a little bit more into like a others array method and they are phenomenal. They really like that. They're really cool. Everything that you can do with uh, this, uh, this array methods, you can just do by simple writing uh, a, a for loop, you know, in, in while loop, you, you can always do that. But they are like, a, these methods, they are built in in JavaScript just to make your code more more clean and more readable, right? What do you prefer to read, like a, a, a for each method or a for loop where you have to declare variables, you need to declare your condition, how you need, you need to set up your iterator. No, like a for each handles that for you. Just say, hey, just look through each element on this, on this element, on this, on this array. All right, quick practice time. Um, I'll give you guys uh, 15 minutes. Maybe, uh, Jurgen, if you can set up some breakout rooms of three uh, folks per room in a minute, and then you can go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna post this on Slack so you can have it there. And then see if you can, if you can get this part done here, all right? Uh, yeah, see how, how long you, you can get on these five, five bullet points here, okay? You need to do some research, so on future, okay? Uh, and, and yeah, uh, let me see if I can grab... Uh, I believe you guys have Notion open. I think you just can go to this section here and all along this exercise. I can also post that on Slack. But yeah, uh, when the breakout rooms are ready, uh, Jurgen, you can open it up and then we will be back uh, in 15 minutes. All right, second. There we go. It is crazy if you think for a moment, like uh, in the beginning when the computer, uh, on the creation of, of the computer, work with the computer was something like a very, like a uh, reserved for a group of engineering. So you have to have a degree and it was like a all scary, like a, when I did computer science, nobody wants to be a, a developer. Nobody wants to touch programming because it was, like a, working with the old languages, like a, it was a really, really not like a good, good approachable, but now like a, every, like a learning how to program on the, these new languages are so much easy. All right, let's do a quick review and then we go, we're gonna go on a break. So we had to, you have to look it up how filter works, right? So MDN filter, there we go. Well, not not a CSS filter. 
I think I'm, maybe I will need to do like a, a ray method. Let me go back here. I should be on the side of this page. Filter. There we go. So filter, how that works. A method creates a new array with all the elements that pass the test implemented by a provide function. A, what's, what is the provide function? A callback, right? A callback function. So basically, uh, what I'm what I'm doing here, what this is saying, like in here, let's see, he's using arrow function with the with the word, and you see like the the words is another array. I mean, it is the array. Uh, so here is our array cars, right? And we need to. The first point here is to, oops, research how filter works. Okay, so. This is like the key fat, the, the key element that you, that you need to understand how how you're gonna use filter, right? Um, and then the second thing is use filter, use filter method. I'm gonna put it here, uh, and I wanna open the word wrap. Use filter method to select the objects. This is what you want. You want the objects within the cars array that have been driven more than two to uh, twenty thousand miles per year. All right. So first thing that I that I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do like a this in a very like a breakdown way. So I'm gonna do wait a second. Let's do this over here. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to create the callback function because this is like a it, it, it was going to test each each element in, on, on the array. So uh, let's say here, I'm going to do a const um, cars. Um, and I'm going to give a name. Say I'm gonna say cars, uh, twenty more. Uh, well, like a naming variable is always gonna be a struggle. Uh, with more than twenty miles, twenty k okay, miles. There we go. It's a mouthful just for the sake of the lesson, all right? It is equal, oh God, it is equal. I'm gonna use a arrow function here. And the only thing that, I, that I'm gonna pass here is uh, more than, I'm gonna, just pass a millage, right? Uh, and then here, the only thing that I want to do, and I just want to check if the car has a millage of, um, oh, actually, sorry, it's not millage, it's car. I want to test the car, not just the millage, the car. So the car, if the car has a millage of, uh, more than to 20K. If it is, I want it to return true. That's how the, the filter works, but you need to return, you need to, to, to return a Boolean to, it which will be ind indicating if pass or not the, this, this test, right? Just like, just like here, here's the condition that we are uh, returning. So uh, here, let's let's do if car dot millage millage uh, is bigger than uh, let's say two hundred. All right, 
if this, oops, I forgot the things here, then you can just return re turn true. Else return false. And again, there's a tons of ways to, to do this. I'm just doing this way to kind of breaking down uh, the exercise. Later on, I'm going to write it everything like in a more concise way. But I really want you guys to get like a, this dissect version and really understand what's going on on, on this. All right. So this is my callback. Uh, this is my callback. Function. Function. All right. And now that I see car. Uh, and by the way, here, this naming, uh, this name for this function is terrible, right? Because you don't know, change it once. Well, that too. No, I mean, uh, Following the conventions of, like, of when you declare a function, you, you should always use a verb, right? Because function do something for you. It not just like a store stuff or random like a, a variable. So yeah, this is like a pretty bad naming uh, function here. So I'm going to change this. So looking what this function do is what I should name this function. Right, so this function is just doing what? Checking the millage, right? If it is higher than this value. So I can just use, start by a verb, using a verb, check millage. On the, uh, on the lecture, it says to store the variable um, as well-driven cars. Uh, not the callback. Uh, the la this is where I'm going to put the, the array, right? The variable name, well-driven cars, it will be what I'm going to return by the filter. And I'm going to get that. But yeah, thank, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, I, I'm sure like other folks have the, uh, the same question. Uh, yeah, let's skip it. Wow, what's happened? Okay. Let's put it right there. So this is my callback. I'm not doing anything with filter just yet. We also, uh, it's 2000 uh, per year. We missed that. So we need to add the other conditional. So uh, you want a car mileage divided by. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, skull. that would be, that would be more engineering. That would be. Well, it does the, 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 the next line is 2,000 miles underneath that per year. Yeah, I can do that here. Let's say uh, the mileage uh, divide by car uh, car dot year. No, uh, years old. Years old. So let's say, let me see if this this the this makes sense. So like uh, I have a the first car here, the mileage is this, right? And I want to divide by the the how many years by five, and then the result of this I want to check if it is bigger than twenty k. That does, that does make sense. Awesome. So there we go. Here's the my code. Here's the code. How we're gonna do that? The car millage divided by the car year. It needs to be bigger than than this one and this number. All right. If it does is true, it will return true. If it's not, it will return false. There's a uh, there's a a easier way to do this, like in one line. But again, I'm I'm. I'm doing, uh, I'm going slow. I really, I, I know that. 
uh, and I really wanted to 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 show this instead of just showing like the 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 fancy one liner piece of code that will solve this problem. Okay, so all right, cool. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Corey. Uh, and there we go. This is what my what what this function do. It takes a car object and it check if if the if the mileage is what I'm what 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 is it what what it is in my test here. All right. Uh, all right. Okay. So now I will actually create the filter. Use the filter. Right. So it is saying here. Use the filter method to select the objects with, within the cars array that have been driven more than 20k miles per year. So now is the filter. I'm going to just start by doing cars dot filter. And the only thing that I need to do is pass the callback. And that's it. That's like a much more this is like a way more uh, more more concise, I think, for like a uh, when when we're getting getting up like a the most <clears throat> excuse me. This is like a, a little bit different the way we're doing when we put the whole like an anonymous function in here, but this is one way that you can do. You can declare the function outside and then pass it pass that that function as a callback. To another function. In this case, the filter is, is the function. More specific, the method. All right. And this will work. If we console log this, remember that filter, what's filter do? Uh, there you go. Method creates a new array. So if it is creating a new array, and we can even like go more down here with the return value, a new array with the elements that pass the test. If no, if no elements pass the test, an uh, empty array will be returned. So this is returning a, uh, a new array with all the cars that is passing this test. So if I console log this, uh, console.log cars, and if I see on my screen here, I'll see two cars. Only the Ford and the Toyota. All right. Only the Ford and the Toyota are passing this test, and this is what the filter do. If uh, if uh, if you are whatever you wanted to to be your uh, to be accept uh, to be included on the new array for that specific car, you want to return true, right? If you want to skip it that and you want to uh, add to the new array, you would pass false. Let's see if we just like I've just to demonstrate this, let's let's uh, let's switch this. So we do false here and let's do true here. Now we got the other force, right? Because we we switched the, the statements. Toyota, Ferrari, uh, Subaru, and Tesla. Do we have, oh yeah, we do have two Toyotas, that's why. One has like a, a five years old. All right. So this is like a dissecting the filter array method, all right? And again, a demonstration on how we can use callbacks. This isn't including the step five, correct? This is including this step. Okay. Yeah, I've not even touched step three, which is store the new array returned by the filter in a variable, which is pretty, pretty chill, right? You just need to do a const, then you have to bring this. Since this returns a new array, you can just assign that to, to the new variable. That's number three. That this line here is number three. Uh, oops. Sorry, my mouse is crazy. My my mouse had there's uh, something going on with my my mice here. 
Sorry, folks. And we're just about to go on a break too. Um, all right. So number, uh, you may use either an anonymous or a name function as a callback function provide to the future. I use a name function. I am just passing the function that already exists to be to be my task case for the future. All right. Um, cool. Before I move on to number five, which is including for each and, and is something else, uh, let's put it back the way it was, the, the right way. True. And um, let's do here false. All right. Can I do this instead of having six lines? Could I just like a simplify this? Now that I know how it works, yeah, it is much easier to refactor the code. And using the, my knowledge that I have from JavaScript, um, this evaluation, when I when I test this, this is evaluating to a to a to a Boolean value, right? It will tell like a, if this is true or false. So I could just return this instead of doing this whole if statement. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna just comment that. I could just do return. Oops. Uh, return this condition, the test. That will work because this will at the end of the day this will evaluate into a Boolean expression, right? This is a Boolean expression. It will be true or false. Well, it won't work because you chopped off a C at the beginning. Yeah. If you type it right, it will work. Right? Or if you do this, now it will work, right? Right? Yes. If you do this, also it will work. <laughs> Uh, all right, and let's test it out. Uh, I'm not console logging. Console.log. Well, driven cars. There we go. My well driven cars, the same result. Now I have just one single line of code. Can I make this even more fancy and like a go like a one liner? Sure I can. The V arrow function, they have the return implicit when you are returning everything in the same line. So you can get rid of this. And then also uh, you don't need to open, you can get rid of this here as well. And then you can just do this. This will also work. And this is a function. This is like a, a way more like a slick way to write your code. But at the end of the day, it will still be working just fine. And I think I said that uh, the other day, as, as you shrink your code to fit in one line, the harder it will be to really understand what it's doing. And I kind of agree with that. Uh, like we have a, a, a callback here that is looping through an array, checking this condition, returning the true, and creating a new array of all, all the objects that pass that test. So a lot of things are going on here. And you can even like make this, since you only have one argument passing as the callback, you can get rid of, of the parentheses. Like a, when I said this, it initially, I need to, to kind of, oh, okay, let me really look what's going on here. And then I say, okay, is that this is a anonymous function and all that. And again, this will work just fine. Okay. What do I like to do first? I never go to the fancy liner. I always write the code just like that. And I'm being honest with you. I always like to write the code, make sure it is working, 
and then I refactor it and see if I can feed in less line. All right. So that being said, I'm gonna leave it this way here. And I'm gonna comment it out this. Let's see, or, or, and do that. And something went off here. Let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot to uh, delete the console log. Load driven cars. All right, let's do a 10 minutes uh, break. Oh. Yeah. You yeah. also have to do the for each. Yeah, I'll do that after the break. Uh, oh. Let's take a 10 minutes and we will convene with the lesson. Can you Slack um, this code? I have a bug. Um, sure. Yeah. Yep. I uh, will put that on, on the classroom channel uh, right now. Thank you. Not running uh, late here on the lesson. Yeah. Uh, let's reserve another time. Um, number five, right, Blake? Um, for each. It does need to write a for each method on the well driven cars array in console log each car object. So I think that that will that's pretty sweet. That's pretty pretty cool. We can just do for e oops well driven cars the for each and then here here let's see. Here we can we, we can pass an anonymous function just like that. Um technically you think console log a function. So what? Use the for each method on the well driven cars array to console log each car object. Wait. Corey's asking if is dot log considered no, a method. No, just, just yeah, well, I like I have I did this step and I have for each uh, console dot log and that's it. Oh, like fact, you, cons friend. you so, console log the for each. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Cause, cause I will do that because that's technically a, a callback. I mean, that's a a method, right? I will do that and <laughs> let's talk about that. Uh, that's not gonna hurt anything, but well, yeah, no, so that. no. Uh, Inside your for each. Oh, right here, console log. Take away, delete everything. Just console log. Ooh. Console dot log. Console dot log. Is that right there is a function? No, the, you're referencing the function. Take it out. You're calling the function within there. Right here, we're just referencing. No, take that out. Just console log. Yeah, just console log. Because otherwise, oh. you're trying to call the ref the the that that's right. It. That's true. And let's see here. Wow, that was, I never, never thought about that. Just passing the console log, the car object. That, that is really thoughtful, uh, Corey. You got the idea. You're referencing console log as a method, which it takes one argument, right? And then print that argument on the, on the developer tool. The that was difference. really great. Uh, uh, I'm shocked. Um, the only thing that's, I guess, I don't say wrong about it, but that may cause some issues is that you're also console logging well-driven cars each time. Because um, you can see right under make Ford, it does the object again. And then under make Toyota, it does the, or do, it does the array again. Let's see. Make Ford. Line 31 is getting console logged here. It is console logging twice. Yeah, it's console logging the array, and then it's also console logging the first object, and then again, the second object, but also the array, which is why I think mm. it, is, it would be better to um, for each and then do the arrow function where you console log the object that gets passed in. Yeah, uh, being honest, uh, I'm really impressed with the idea. 
Well, it's, it's, I never it's, never thought about doing just that. Uh, I'm not sure if Ben or Jurgen saw, saw, saw this before. I thought I thought that was really cool. I never thought about yeah. that. <laughs> but really, I mean, and here we, we don't want to get wrapped up in the minutia of the exercise, right? Like we're we're console audience to screen. That's the point. The point here is not how we display the information. The point is that we're using filter. So that's the. I understand we want to match exactly what the prompt saying the lesson, but let's focus on the big picture, which is how filter works, not necessarily the mm -hmm. how we're going to print it out to the screen. But yes, you're everyone. Everyone's right. Yes. Yep. Air high fives for everyone. <laughs> high fives. Uh, yeah, I really like this. I I like this much that I'm going to keep it. Uh, I like this. For me, you do the the trick. But if you if you don't, you can also pass the card there, maybe, or you can just pass your own callback, you know. Awesome. I like that. Thanks for sharing that with us, Corey. Uh, cool. Um, all right. So we're done here with uh, this little practice. So let's talk about even more about callbacks. You thought that was done? Um, no. Here we have, we're going to talk about some asynchronous functions and why callbacks they are they play a really good part on how to handle these asynchronous functions again like a, a later on unit two we will be using a lot of, of callbacks to to handle some asynchronous operations how to handle like a request from coming from the database uh, re request response uh, shooting through our our server uh, right now, we're just going to experiment doing some like a basic stuff just so we can see the the, the potential of, of callbacks in, in asynchronous functions. Okay, so right now, this code here that you can see, pretty basic, nothing to, to say about it here. It's just an array of red, green, and blue, and I'm just console logging before the, before the for each. And this code here will just console log each each uh, element with their respective uh, index, and this is what you're gonna get, right? So one thing that we take for granted, and it's kind of uh, how how we understand when we start learning how to code, is that our code will always like a run line by line, right? Uh, when you go to my console, the first thing that you're gonna see is this console log. And then the next thing, I will declare this variable. I'm going to declare this function. I'm going to filter that and that. I'm going to do that. So it looks like a very synchronous, like a going line by line, right? But we do have, we, we can perform some asynchronous operations in JavaScript. And there's a, a couple of ways to do that. We're going to focus on two uh, main functions, which is the set timeout and the set interval today, but there's another one which will be very, very ex um, much more explore when we get to unit two, which you call promises. Uh, so yeah, so what do I mean by that? How can I write some uh, asynchronous uh, code execution, right? So pretty much the same code that I have above, right? But, but this time, this time, I'm using this set timeout, right? Go ahead and let's let's copy this. Let's copy this block of code. We can just click on the little button here. This is one of the things that I like about Notion. You can just like a boom, click it. I, I, I thought that would be awesome. I advise you to copy things like that, just like I, as I did before, <laughs> missing a letter. I think you can only do that if you have editing power, by the way. Yeah, oh, I, I still agree oh, with really? her on that. Yeah, I, I very. Oh, man. <laughs> so you're just bragging to us, but it's fine. I try to sell Notion, Ben. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, you know, you win some, you lose some. It's all right. Yeah, but I, it's easier than copying and pasting shit in GitHub. So it's still a win for us. We're good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can copy. Make sure you copy everything. All right. And let's paste it down here. And let's see what that does. So just a quick array of colors here, right? And we'll put just a set time out. 
set timeout. Um, and then I just put in a console log before the for each, but the for each this time, it is wrap on the set timeout function. What is set timeout? Uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Set MDN set timeout. Okay, so we we see this window or worker global scope dot set timeout, big mouthful. Let's focus on on the on the description here. A method that sets a timer, which executes a function or a specified piece of code once the timer expires. Right? It's just like a as you as you're cooking something and then you put the, the bake in the oven and then you just like a set a timer and then you don't need to like a, to keep like a looking at the clock second by second you just like to put a timer there and you can do something in parallel uh, and then that timer will run and then when the time goes off it will it will call your attention or will do whatever you need to do uh, one moment let me see go back to the All right. So let's talk about the, the syntax here of the set timeout. Again, look at that, the parameters, a function to be executed after the time expire. Or you can even pass a code. This is not very well recommended because what JavaScript we didn't talk about evolve in is, is a bit of like a, a a risky uh, uh, feature to go. Uh, you, you can more read more about uh, about it on on your spare time. But but yeah, you can also like a pass a string and then that string will be resolved with the evolve method, which will run, which will execute the, the code for you. All right, and here is the the delay, right? Uh, which is in our code is being represented by this 1000, 1000 number here, which represents uh, 1000 milliseconds, just one second. All right. So this function is my callback, this block here, and it will only execute after one second. And if you want more time, you can just add your number here in milliseconds, nine seconds, 10 seconds, and so on. Okay. Let's keep it. Let's do two, two seconds. And let's update this. Just to, so I can have time to shift to the browser here. And if I save this, let's take a look at our, our console log here. Let's say... Okay, this is what I do. And after two seconds, we got this function getting executed, which is just a for each console logging, each color and the index on the array. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, one moment, let me just see if everything's okay here. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Um, and this is one way that we can write some asynchronous operation in JavaScript using the set timeout. Or you can also uh, change this to set interval. Interval. The, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Interval. Inter, I'll get that interval. Would you advise using this if there's code to be run after that? So I like duplicated console log code after the for each like 50 times. And now I'm trying to figure out what millisecond would like how far down I have to go in order for like the the code to run between them. Sorry, Michael, uh, do, do you want to rephrase your question? I'm not sure if I'm if I'm following you. So what I'm saying is your 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 set your delay essentially is set to to 2000 or two seconds, right? Yes. Would you would you do this if there was code to run after the code console.log? So right now you're what what's happening is you're you're 
your code after for each runs. And then after that, your, your function runs because you've set the delay. Yeah. But, oh. but, but if you had additional code after the console.log. Let's say, let's say when you load the page, when you load the page here, uh, I'm not going to like uh, write the code, but let's say you want to add some, some effect that like when you render the page, after five seconds, you see a, a pop-up on the window here, right? You can use a set timeout. Say, oh, after five seconds of the page was reload, I want to use some DOM manipulation JavaScript that will create a pop-up and pop that on, on your browser. OK. And, think... and you still can, can uh, uh, finish your code. You don't need to like, uh, wait for, the, for, for those five seconds to then like a keep going with your code, you know? You can do what you need to do, declare the, your, your, your variables, set up the, the whole thing, and then you can set that timeout just to pop the pop-up. There, we're gonna talk more about set timeout, set, inter set interval, and asynchronous timing functions on Friday in an optional lecture. But I think what you're asking, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, is what if you don't know how long you want to wait based on what is in the code, right? Well, I mean, for, for example, right, you're console logging the index and in color. Right. So what I'm saying is, so if you had something later down, like if you had code beyond your console.log, mm -hmm. like how do you know how far to set it before it's like, be, like, cause it's gonna keep, it's gonna fire two seconds, like, how many lines of code is two seconds, I guess, is what I'm asking. That's, oh. uh, yeah, it's going to run immediately. So if, if what you're running is not in the set timeout, it's like when, when the compiler, when it's being compiled and run, it's going to go through and the interpreter hits that set timeout and it's going to say, okay, hey, in two seconds, I run this. And then it keeps going. So your code beneath that's going to keep. Keep well, that's why I'm. Well, that's why I'm saying. Like, would you use like with this with this kind of setup where you're console logging, and then waiting two seconds afterward? How many lines uh, is two seconds? Like, yeah, it's, 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 like gonna, it's gonna keep. It's gonna keep okay. firing. Uh -huh. I mean, that's potentially. You don't. You don't. Uh... You know, I'm saying. I feel like. I, so that's why I'm trying. I was trying to constantly reduce the number from two thousand. I'm down to like five hundred to fifty. Like in. I'm duplicating lines to see where it chops in between, and I have yet to find it. Yeah. Promises are going to be a solution to what you're trying to do. If you want to wait for something to happen before, I, I don't know what the answer is to that. And it's also going to be based on your machine, right? Yes. Your machine is going to yeah. have a, a huge difference. Yep. Fair enough. Yeah, it will depend on on how powerful your 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 processor. And you know, like a one second means like a two thousand lines of code. Uh, for me, maybe it's different for you. Uh, so the point uh, that I want to make is, if you want, if you want to make like a something, add some code, that that it depends on the execution of your set timeout. Uh, we rather putting outside here on the global scope, put inside. Put inside. You can you can add more code here. You can declare variables. You can do other stuff. Right. If your code depends on that timeout, put put everything on that function. You know? Awesome. So set timeout, it was just like a wait this amount of time uh, in like a two seconds to actually finally uh, run this function here. And we also have another one pretty similar call set interval, interval. And this one I will actually do, just gonna save, just gonna keep it. And this is what's gonna happen, right? In every two seconds, I'm running that function, that this function here. What does do look like to you? Something that goes on and off, like a that runs every single uh, interval. 
the limit in interval, you could maybe potentially set up a timer. You know, if your game needs a timer, like a, 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 a countdown to 30 to one, you can do with the set interval. And I think maybe this is part of the lesson that the, the, the optional lesson on that then we'll do on Friday. So I will, I will leave it that, that for, for Friday. But here we go. The only thing that you can, you, you need to pay attention because this, this is going forever. Like uh, until like uh, I don't refresh my page, it's still like coming, coming up. So the only thing that you need to do is make sure you, if, if, if you want to stop, you just need to use another, another uh, method here, which is to clear the interval. So it doesn't need to uh, save that into a variable. I'm going to call that uh, interval, interval ID. And then I'm going to just do that. And you see that it's still going. But then I can use here on the browser, just for demonstration, clear interval. And then you pass that interval ID that you set up. So you can put interval ID, and that will stop running your set interval. All right, cool. So this is a one way that you can write asynchronous code in, in JavaScript. We're gonna, I'm gonna just do this here, just so we can have, uh, Write it down, but I'm going to go back to the set timeout and I'll put it back in the both here. Set timeout or that interval. And I'm going to comment it out this. And for this to work, you need set timeout, those specific words in front of the function. Yeah, the set timeout, it is the method that you were using. Okay. Cool. Ooh, let's talk about more uh, why why I'm I'm showing this for you all. Uh, so uh, we just like a did, did a demonstration on set timeout, set interval. Um, why do asynchronous asynchronous functions exist? Just by design, you know. Uh, you want like a, I did an example right now. You want to set up a timer in your in your browser. This is one way that you would set up a timer, a, a countdown, something like that. Or you just like uh, want to cause some some effect on when you render your page. Um, you you want to turn out like a trigger something right after right of the batch when you when you load your page on the on the. On the browser, you want to like a wait for five seconds, ten seconds. You never saw that when you go to what to a website, and then like you are, you find you just like a surfing in the internet, and then boom, propagate uh, marketing advertisement show up like a block in your your whole window. Hey, click here to buy this product. You know, this is the one thing that, that you can do with the set timeout. Uh, nice. So, so with this. Because I see the event or ad event listeners, so I think you literally just said it, but I was reading it and thinking about it, a situation. If you if you're <laughs> if you're scrolling on a web page and you get to a certain point, it could just trigger by itself, pretty much. Did that even make sense? Uh, you mean? Oh no, like a you you can do that. There is a a a proper like a scroll event, like a, as you scroll the page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Netflix do this really well because like a, as you. Uh, you get like a when you go to Netflix web page, and then you get like a a couple movies, right? Mm -hmm. And then as you start scrolling down, uh, in one point of the page, Netflix will run another. But this is not much into uh, the set time out. I would think it's more like a, a scroll event. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There, there was this really popular Converse thing back <laughs> a couple years ago, where the more you scroll down, it was like a comic, and then there's like a jump scare in there. That reminded me of it. So cool. Yep. And another one, uh, this we will see a lot 
uh, pretty much every day on unit two for performance. Um, sometimes you do want to, to, to trigger uh, write something right after you load your page on the, on the, on the browser. But uh, sometimes those operations can take a, a, a long time to, to run, like a grabbing data from a database. This, this, this delay, it, it does like to take some time sometimes. It, and if it's a really crowded database, it will take a, a couple seconds, like a 15 seconds or even more than that. So using the set timeout, you can still like a, a set up, like, try to send the data, but you still you you still can load the page, set up your variables, make sure you like a, the your uh, the client is, is is looking some like a raw like a, a skeleton, you know, in, in in the page, and then when when the when the data gets back, you can populate that on on the page. And this is a more this is not not a, a good case to to use set timeout, but it does it is on promises and promises is pretty much uh, fifty percent of everything we're gonna do on unit two, if not more. Well, more than that, yeah. All more promises are I'll so be... <laughs> awesome. Yep. Promises, promises. I promises, guys. I promise it's gonna be good. All right. It's similar to try versus oh. a try than exception or something like that? Sorry, David, you, you cut off. I was just asking, are promises like if we like try and then exception? OK, fine. Yep, they're like that. They're like dot then. Like, there's a couple different ways to handle promises that I'm sure we'll, well, we have a whole lesson on promises next unit, but you, you might get a little sneak peek here in a second. Express JS. Yeah, uh, let's do something. Let's do something together here. Um, let's see. The goal here, like a, this, is like a, the the traffic light um, that we that I I taught before. I don't think this is the same traffic light that you guys saw on the pre work because we actually need to build pretty much like a, everything, not just to fix the code. Uh, so go ahead and let's add this piece of code here to your to your body, right? You can, you can just like a copy the main part. I'm gonna do that and go to the index and drop in there. And also I'm, I'm gonna grab this CSS here uh, and I'm gonna put in there. Just, just so we can have like a, a, a starter point. I'm gonna even like a delete this and put everything from the lesson. And this is what I should see on the page. Just a traffic light. And let me stop this, <laughs> this set interval. Uh, one moment. Um, set timeout. I need to save the file. There you go. This should see something like this. Right. And the goal here is to use set timeout in a very nice way where we will print this little uh, circle here of, of, of green. We'll start with that. And then we're going to change that to the yellow. And then we're going to change that to, to red. We're going to use set timeout and callbacks for that. This is a really good exercise. So let me clear that and let's get into it. All right. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna set up here, let's go to our JavaScript file. Uh, we need to, we're just gonna set up a basic a structure that will indicate like how long each color will take and and then we're going to use that as our data point, all right? So you can copy and paste, or you can type. Let's see if I can type this correctly. Like, like sequence. 
flight sequence and that this is just an array. Let's see if I can use my superpowers here to uh, expedite a little bit. So let's do this. No, no. no that's, yeah, that, that's better. So I can open to object, color, uh, boom. I'm going to add the color later. And then the time. Uh, and I'm going to start with this. And let's put it a parentheses here. And then the yellow is just like one second. And this is one two seconds. So this is, will be green. And yellow in red. Just just a, a data a data point where I can know like, a, oh, the red color, it would take three seconds, yellow one second, green two seconds, right? And I call that light sequence. Next thing that we want to do, and let me see if I can make this more visual here. We want, we will uh, declare this this function here. Oh, sorry, folks. Uh, oh, yeah. Then we will we we want to to grab those divs that we have on our main block, right? We want to grab this this divs here. And for this one, I'll be using query selector all. I usually uh, uh, I every time that I want to get something from the DOM, I would. I'll mainly use or query selector or or query selector. I think those are work better for me. Uh, but if you if you want to use other selector, it's fine. I'm fine with that. Uh, cool. So let's do that. So const uh, light light elements and then document the query. Oops, get my query selector all. Oh. And here I need to pass, basically, I need to pass a CSS selector. That's why I like I like uh, the query selector a lot more. Uh, div. This, if you if you don't know what it's doing, is just like a uh, looking, I'm, I'm grabbing all the all the div childs of the main tag. So I'm, I'm grabbing the main and just grabbing the divs. This is what this selector is doing. It's doing for me. All right. And right now I'm just going to go ahead and do this set up like a, a starting point. Like uh, right now, my flash, my my traffic light, you just have no starting point. And I will start by uh, making this, the first color will be the green on the screen. So I'm going to just, that's what I mean by, oops, I don't mean to do that. So here, this is what this code is doing, just the, the star point of my traffic light. I'm going to copy and paste that. And not just that, this will also be uh, how I'm going to track. So if I am, um, so pretty much if you got the idea here, I will start with two, then I will subtract this to one, which will render the yellow. And then after that, it will render the red. This is how I'm going to do this. All right. I'm going to start with the number two here from green. All right. OK, a couple codes. Now I'm going to declare a function that will be only in charge to render the light. That, that's the only thing. I'm going to call this function over and over. And the only thing that the function will do, it will just switch the, the light that it is currently in change to the, to the next line. And for that function, I'm going to use a callback. You see the CB? 
these are also a, another convention way that we can uh, tell, tell our code that this is a callback. And let's do that. Um, I know I know this kind of sucks to just copy and paste, but just so we can have time for questions and, and all, I'm just gonna go 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 ahead and, and, and copy this and we're gonna go over line by line. Once I got my like a speed typing elevated to at least 70 words per minute, that would be the ideal. Uh, right now uh, I'm a slow typer. Uh, all right, so the first thing that I'm doing here on this function is to 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 make the to make like a this line like a shut off and show up show the next one. I'm just gonna write some code that will just like a remove the colors of all of them, just like a as I was like a uh, initializing this 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 traffic light. So this is what this code is doing. Uh, I'm using here um, uh, a for each to loop through to this. Uh, I think this is a HTML collection. Let me just check that to tell you guys the the right terminology. Node list. Node list. I call it node collection. Yeah, it's a it's an HTML collection. It's, I think it says node list in the browser. You also have all oh, yeah. uh, capitalized. Yeah. What else? On 63, your query selector all. Thank you. Yeah, it's a node list. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thanks, Ben. Uh, so, which is an array like? So, pretty much you can also use the for each to, to, to loop through it. And the only thing that I'm doing here, I'm just changing the background color to black. Right. And just, just so it kind of don't get distracted, I'm going to comment it out this code as well. All right. So right now, this is not doing anything yet because I just declared a function. So that's why it's not turning black just right off the batch. But when we call it, that will make sense. And then here is where we will be changing. We will be switching our light sequence, right? Right now, the light sequence that I'm, that I'm starting on is the current, is the number two. So when this happened, I will be changing. This represents two right now at the first time, right? And then I'm going to change it. The, I'm going to use that to change the background color and change the light sequence to that color, which is green. OK, just so again, light sequence here on the on the right side it is this object that i have here on line 57. i'm just using uh, the square brackets to get the the value of my current light and get the color property of that object which will be green yellow or red right and that will switch between the current light index that i'll be switching on all right. And lastly, I'm going to set a timeout. And this is a little bit tricky part of, of this code, of the solution, is that right now, actually, th this will just like a responsive to render, right? It's just like a rendering the stuff. But I'm going to use another function that will actually change the, uh, that will like a increment this, 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 this variable. So we can go to two, one, zero, and then go back to two, one, zero. All right. And we have the code here on Notion. So here, the render light. And pretty much this is the, the last piece of the code that we have so far. We let's declare this function here. 
render next light. Copy that. Throw, throw in there. And before we look on the on the docs uh, on the on the browser, let's see what we're doing here. So this is a little bit tricky because I am declaring the function here and I'm passing that function, the function that I'm declaring as an argument to the render light. And then if you see, if you see here on line 70, render light, it is expecting a callback, which will be render light. And what this is gonna do, and if you're now like a very pretty familiar at this point with the, with the ternary, what this line is doing here in line 84 is this, if this condition, if this condition is true, I want to change, I want to reset the current line index to, no, to number two, else I'm gonna bring current light minus minus, that would decrease that indicator. That it right here is where we're gonna change the current light index to two, one, zero. When it got to zero, I'm gonna reset back to two. And that will like a, uh, create the loop, the loop, uh, the loop uh, behavior. So you're gonna go to green, yellow, red, and then we'll go back to number two, which represents the green. All right. And let's see how that it is looking on the browser. Yeah, it's already there. Two questions. Yes. Um, one is why do we call render next light and not render light? And then what value is CB being assigned? I will start with your with your second question. Okay, so CB, it is a callback, and is being assigned the render next light, and that will be called in a set timeout after this amount of time. Right. So this is like a this is a a, a pretty interesting example because it looks like a this is an infinite loop, but no, I'm just like a passing. The, the render next line as an argument. And I inside of here, I'm setting that as a, as a timeout, as my callback, right? So then I'm going to call that callback, which you will call it again, the render light. But then this, this is the part that it really like a, a makes sense because every time that I call this callback, I will be decrementing my current index. And when the index hit to zero, I want to refresh to two. And that's why I, it, that's why it is causing to go back to the green when I got to the red. Right now. And this looks like a, a infinite loop, but no, this is just a, a pattern to, to cause this, this, this behavior. It's just like a, I'm setting timeout. I'm setting timeout for each color every every single time All right. and your your first question i forgot um it was why do we call render next light first and not render light oh right here right yes so because render light it is expecting a callback this is one point here and uh, I need to call, maybe this, it, it should just be, it should just be like a, a star a traffic, traffic light. Maybe that would be a better name, but this is like a, my starting point. And, and like a, right here is where I am now, just like a starting everything and, and, and rendering accordingly to my, my data points here. So my data points, just to remember is the light sequence and this little 
indicator where where light I should print on the screen, right? And the reason I'm assuming the reason why it works is because you're only doing the timeout for what you have is line 76. It's only doing the, the timeout there for that. Because it's when you load up the page originally, everything, you know, the top two squares are, or circles are black and the bottom one is green. So, and that's because you're not setting the timeout for those things. You're only setting it out for it to repeat and do the callback function, which then calls the function. And mm -hmm. there's a timeout, then it does the callback function to the function. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, is a is a little bit tricky, uh, but 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 you got it. The callback it will end up calling the function itself again, but this next time that it will be calling, it will, will be calling with a different uh, index, right? And that index will switch the caller, it will, which will do the magic, and also will set set up another timeout with a different timer. And that callback, we'll call it again <laughs> with a different set of uh, uh, data points for you. And then we got this, this crazy behavior here. So uh, I was following along. I even copied and pasted the same stuff, but I'm getting, I'm getting errors for some reason. You probably copied something wrong because <laughs> I, I just copy as well. Comment out the stuff yeah, we did I, earlier. I did the same thing and I was um so cool. missing letters am i you know missing uh, letters well, yeah you probably yeah. did like a like this like a this. function or something like yeah. that well, i did oh, let me check that out yeah i i yeah. just for the sake of time i also copy this and uh and then uh, it worked yeah it works uh, the only thing that i change here is just to make more visible uh visible is i changed the ternary if you're not like that friendly with the, with the Turner, uh, ternary syntax, I put into a uh, if else statement, just to be a little bit more visual, but this should also work if you use the ternary. This example is complex, right? The, the, we're getting into kind of mind numbing territory here with how exactly this is working because there's a lot of different stuff happening. I wanna preface this, this is all really important but you're not going to see a lot of this in unit one. We just, we have to talk about this because callbacks obviously are what 90% of the code that we're going to be writing in uh, the subsequent units are going to be, but they're not all going to use set timeout functions. So don't get too wrapped up in this. Like this example is really cool, um, but it's, it's not the way that we're going to see this. Just like Tiago said, it's going to be more, um, uh, you're going to have functions that execute different blocks of code instead of like timing traffic lights. It's going to be like, okay, I'm going to fetch some data. Again, the same example that he used earlier. We're going to fetch some data from a database. We're going to fetch a record from a database. And then we're going to do this. And we're going to use a different terminology when we use uh, asynchronous functions and callbacks. We're actually going to use dot then because it makes more verbal sense, right? And rather than having weird functions all pasted, when, with, we're going to use dot then because that's a, a great way to do a promise. And we're gonna talk about promises again later, but this is the, yeah. what you should be taking out of this lecture is not necessarily how timers work, it's it's how callback functions work. Well, won't oh. the timers be helpful for like, for example, if we wanted to add animation, cause like I'll do blackjack. So like adding an animation of the card going down, you wanna do a timer for like oh, totally. something. Yeah, okay. Well, here's the deal with that though. Animations are gonna be different cause we're not gonna teach you how to actually do like CSS animations, like actually right. like edit because that's just like that's way too much for right now um but we will i'll, I'll show you a couple of cool animation libraries the set timeout that you're going to want to use for your games for things like timers and making sure that a card is visible on the screen for so long before it turns over that will all be detailed on my lecture on friday and it's you'll get to see all that stuff um i have a quick question about um up here where we're declaring the light uh, element with the collector hmm. all. Now I have already tested this. We uh, are going uh, main to div. What is uh, the purpose of this instead of just div? This is a part where I was getting kind of stuck in my tic-tac-toe is this, uh, this thing right here. Very good, amazing question. Uh, that right now, this is what all, all we have, right? I could just do div 
yeah, that's for sure. Uh, oops, sorry, folks. I could just do div. Uh, and I think that will just give the same behavior. Yeah. However, uh, I just like a be be more like a concise with my with that example. If what if I have another div here? Let's say a I don't know. Let's put a, a, a div uh, on the top actually. Let's say traffic light. Uh, they have like a traffic light. You know. You see like a that div <laughs> is getting is getting <laughs> getting popped up. So I'm getting uh, when I do this <coughs> here, I'm getting all the divs on my page. On a disk, but if I want to be laser, uh, like a target, like a you know, I just want this divs one, I can use the CSS selectors to just grab the child of the main uh, uh, element, and then I can do let's see, uh, would something like that make like your uh, like thing. like being able to use your like um, li event listeners easier then? Uh, yeah. Correct. Okay, because that, that's what I'm yes. struggling a little bit right now is getting that part set up. Yeah, and and also on on that on that thought, let me show you all something here. Uh, I did a, I I'm not sure if I show you all this, but you can also uh, if you don't know uh, how to grab something, one of my favorite tools. I love the console log. You can just write the code here. You can type document the query query selector, and then you can play with that. Say, oh, I want uh, to to get all the divs. So if I do that, if I do query selector, I would just get the first div on the screen, right? Which is say traffic light. If I want to get all the divs, then I need to use uh, query selector all then these are all the divs right the div with the red the yellow and the, and the green you can play and see if your selector is getting what you need and only what you need uh, and if you get more complex to that another quick thing that you can do is to in your element tab let me shrink this a little bit you go to the main here um Let's see. I if think you, if you ahead. ever plan on building a web scraper, make sure you pay attention to what he's doing right now. Yep. Uh, <laughs> like a, you can just like a, let's say I want to grab the child of the div. Let's see if I can do that. So I can just copy. Uh, this will get me the whole the whole thing. But let's see. Copy selector. Right, and then this, if I paste this somewhere here, just so we can see, this is the selector to just grab the main block, right? Uh, let's see if we can get uh, the child. Let's see if we can maybe do. You should go to like apple.com and pick a random element and get the selector for like something from like a, a website that's really complex. That's a good, that's a better idea. Uh, let's say I want to grab uh, the buy uh, or no, uh, I don't know. Let's let's do this one. Is leap year phone to uh, 12 Pro. You can go to the element tabs. And that, uh, well, like a, what, what uh, Ben was mainly like about web scraping. You can come here, oops. Uh, let, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use this select element feature here. And then I can just like a click on whatever uh, whatever I, I want. Uh, let's see. Let's grab. Let me open this a little bit. Oh, that's like a chunk of, of, let me give more something more concise. Oh, this, this just this one. I want to get this card, right? I'm going to click on that. And then I can come here and say, copy 
selector. And look how crazy this will look like. This is a CSS selector that I could use to grab this, this block on the page. And we can play with that. Look at that. We can copy that here and I go to the console. If we do uh, document the query selector and you paste all the thing. Oops, sorry. Let me see if what I'm doing wrong. Query selector, should I do a all maybe? Uh, query selector. Oh, maybe I lost that that part of the code because I resized the screen and maybe the screen got new elements. I wonder. Uh, or did I try? Okay, let's 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 read the the, the message. On <laughs> is not a valid selector. So, so query document the query selector. Oops. Do it is a valid selector. Oh, one moment. I need to pass. Yeah, this is like this was the unfortunate, unfortunate, and not an ugly example because they use it in child. Let's get another one that is easier, maybe. Let's get the just the logo. There we go. I think that one be, would be a little bit easier to demonstrate. Let me copy the selector. You can even copy the JavaScript path or uh, other stuff here. Uh, I'm going to stick with the selector. And there we go. Well, that's, that's much better because it's just grabbing by the ID. And it's also a node list because I'm using all. Maybe I can use just query selector in this case. Right. So you see, that I, I I don't need to to like uh, inspect the 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 HTML, see how how I can grab the elements just by analyzing. I can just select here on what I want. Let's say let me bring something better here. Let's do this business thing for business. Oh, that's a big selector. Copy, copy selector. Let's play with that one more time. Clear this. Document, uh, query, selector. Pass that down. Yeah, that's a that's a better better example. I think since I I am resizing <clears throat> the the page, the HTML get more like a responsive change some properties on the on the elements, and that's why I'm not finding the the right element. But here we go. There's another way to so you can get the CSS selector just to get to the business. And then we can do this. Um, <clears throat> let's say, let's save this into a variable. Uh, const title, just test actually. And then we can do test. Uh, where is the for business, right? Uh, test dot inner text, right? This is how you get the, the text for it. You can do text or inner text. The, uh, you, call, you can propagate fake news uh, for, for a small business, small business. Look at that. Cool, huh? Look at me teaching you all how to do uh, wrong, wrong stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, That's for small business. Screenshots. 
I'm, I'm down for illegal activities. I'm down. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, uh, this was a, it, uh, it went on a, a little bit of a, of a tangent here, but you know, just getting to know more your, your, your tools, your, the, the browser is your tool as a web developer. Okay, and I, I kind of want to second what Ben said. This example here, this exercise, they are they are really like a tricky. It is very like a tricky to to get this flow going and understand. However, you know, uh, I don't think we we will get something into that level. But if you want it, you can. Here's the notes. Here's the lesson on uh, the lesson is on 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 Notion. You can expand this. You know. Maybe you want to uh, make a game. I think it's the four dots, something like that. Simon. Simon. Simon said you can do something like this. All right. Cool. Sorry for extending. Ah, two minutes. Uh, let's let's go take lunch, and we'll get back at two 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 p.m. Eastern. Cool beans. See y'all. See ya. Yeah. Hey, hey Ben. Yeah. Ben, hey, before what? you leave, I, yes. I looked I looked up the Tate 